trim your son's fingernails and see the future. Play the midnight game that reveals marriage or certain death. Escape a spectral threat by flushing it down the toilet. All these and more radical rituals of reflection and repercussion. It's a portal to hell. It's aesthetically mounted. It's all in this week's superstition-filled snifter of Odd Tonic. Welcome to the parlor. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Maxwell. Have a seat, dear guest. And prepare yourself for... Episode 13! <laughs> <laughs> As only appropriate, we've chosen this week to touch on the world of superstitions. So why not start with the number 13? As we know in the Western world, 13 is an unlucky number. Why? Oh, we hardly know anymore. (laughs) Something about witches or Judas. (laughs) But that doesn't keep buildings from omitting their 13th floor, hotels from dropping room 13, or airplane rows jumping from rows 12 to 14. Actually, Woodrow Wilson, Richard Wagner, and all of ancient Egypt believed 13 (laughs) to be a very lucky number. And modern Italy still does. But in China, if you press an elevator button to get to the 50th floor of a building, you may actually go to the 35th floor because many buildings there not only omit the 13th floor, but are also missing any floor containing the number four, Hmm. which is considered to be the unluckiest number ever. Which sounds funny to Western ears, right? But really, all superstitions are ridiculous. (laughs) Here are some of our favorites drawn from Richard Webster's Encyclopedia of Superstitions. Bread. It's bad luck to take the last piece of bread. Unless you are a bachelor. Then, taking the last piece of bread means you'll marry a wealthy woman. A single woman will never marry if she takes the last piece of bread, (laughs) unless she is offered the last piece of bread, which then is always good luck. (laughs) If a woman puts a round loaf onto the table upside down, it is a sign that she spends a lot of her time on her back, (laughs) which means exactly what it sounds like. (laughs) Sneezing. The first sneeze of a baby is highly important. People used to believe that idiots couldn't sneeze. Consequently, a baby's first sneeze brought great relief to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> jaybirds. Apparently, every weekend, jaybirds go down to hell and tell the devil about the <laughs> sinful things that you have done during the week. I give them a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Note, they also bring the devil twigs to enable him to keep the fires of hell burning. (laughs) Jaybirds, who would have thought? Do you think the Audubon Society knows about this? I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) Might affect their funding. (laughs) Colds. One interesting North American cure for colds was to drive a hickory peg into the ground. It was important to tell no one you were doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Secret. You have to pull the peg out every day for 12 days, blow into the hole seven times, and then replace the peg. <laughs> By doing this, you transfer the cold into the ground. <laughs> this could destroy big pharma forever, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. They'll just start charging $1,000 for wooden pegs. <laughs> And then there are mirrors. For a while now, while I was researching other odd tonic stories, the subject of mirrors kept popping up. So I started bookmarking articles and noting when another one had crossed my path. Hmm. Well, this sounds like a new superstition. Do we have a good show or a bad show after a mirror crossed your path? I don't know. I was too busy reading tea leaves to our black cat. Oh, mm. amulet. Mm. We really need to include a picture of him. We will. All right. To come, dear guest. To come. Well, really, what better object than a mirror to reflect upon for our 13th (laughs) episode? Mirrors are rife with superstition, from the curse of breaking one to covering them at funerals. 
but they also bear a shroud of enigma, as they also served as a divination apparatus for centuries. And have been described through the ages as a detector, a portal, and a conjuring tool for ghosts, or worse. Tonight we'll explore the history and mystery of mirrors. We'll return to eBay, the world's favorite clearinghouse for haunted items, and we'll learn why you shouldn't look at a mirror after Labor Day. Is that true? No, but the legacy of the mirror is just as weird. So let's settle in between two of them and see how far back that repeating reflection of weirdness goes. Can we keep the lights on? That's not how this game is played. The mirror is an everyday object that we don't think much about, but it's rich in history and lore. The earliest mirrors date back to at least 6,000 BCE and throughout the ancient eras were made from polished precious metals or stones, including obsidian, copper, bronze, and iron. The first mirrors with a glass face and metal backing are said to have come from what is now modern-day Lebanon, somewhere between the 1st and 3rd century AD. Mirrors of polished metals or glass were hard to produce and were only owned by the wealthy. So, it's not surprising that the supposed bad luck curse from breaking a mirror is as old as mirror-making itself. The ancient Romans believed that the soul was reflected in a mirror, and if the mirror was damaged, the soul would be damaged as well. However, they also believed that the soul completely rejuvenated itself in seven-year cycles. So, this is probably why it is said that it takes seven years to get rid of bad luck after breaking a mirror. Believe it or not, mirrors as we know them today only came on the scene in eight. 1835, which, compared to 6,000 BCE, was practically yesterday. <laughs> but let's whiplash back to ancient times and discuss the practice of scrying, in which one gazes into a mirror for divination purposes. Scrying seems to go as far back as looking into a reflection to get woolly mammoth out of your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the ancient Hindu, Egyptians, and Greeks all practice forms of scrying. The ancient Egyptians would use a vessel filled with oil and would call a young boy to look into the oil while invoking the name of one of their gods seven times. And in it, it is said they could foresee the future. Hmm. And strangely, the involvement of young boys in scrying rituals continued through the Middle Ages in Europe. Sometimes the boys were instructed by clerics to describe visions they saw, and sometimes the boys themselves were the reflective surface, as clerics and priests would scry the boys' fingernails after polishing them with oil, which is probably just as creepy as it sounds. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> One of the two most notable scryers from the past was mathematician and astrologer John Dee, who was an invaluable member of Queen Elizabeth I's court. Dee's famous shoe stone was a black obsidian mirror brought to Europe by Cortez in the early 1500s after pillaging Aztec high priests from South America. I've got your mirror. <laughs> Come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he sound French? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally, Dee popularized the scrying stone as a tool for practicing mystics and magicians as he journeyed from court to court throughout Europe. And the other notable scryer? He was a plague doctor named Michel de Nostradamus. You might know him as Nostradamus. Scrying eventually began to influence folklore as well. Look no further than Grimm's story of Snow White. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the fairest one of all? Would you like to try scrying your future, dear guest? Check out the show notes for instructions. Along with bad luck curses and magical prognostication properties, mirrors are also indelibly linked to death throughout history. Old Irish beliefs held that the soul of the dead would become trapped inside a mirror that was located too close to the body. An old Chinese superstition says that if a corpse is taken past an uncovered mirror, they would become a ghost. In some distant German and Dutch traditions, mirrors were covered after a death because it was believed that catching a glimpse of yourself after a member of your household died meant that you would go next, and soon. In Jewish culture, 
When someone dies, all mirrors are covered in the house, while members of the household mourn for a week. According to old beliefs, the mirrors are covered because demons visit homes where there has been tragedy or loss. And while they cannot be seen with the naked eye, one can see their reflection in mirrors. And truly, who wants to see that? <laughs> now, dear guest, where has all this superstition come from? What is it that has caused multiple cultures from around the world and for many centuries to draw a connection between mirrors and death? Perhaps the answer is hanging on the nearest wall, waiting to show you. You may have heard about the infamous Myrtles Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana. Built in 1796, the house has become known as being one of the most haunted historical locations in the southern United States. But what you may not realize is that within the haunted house hangs a haunted mirror. In the hallway, across from the main wooden staircase, is a large rectangular mirror with a gilded gold frame. The mirror has been within the house for well over two centuries, and many eerie stories have surfaced about it. According to one story, Sarah Bradford Woodruff, who lived in the house along with her husband and children during the 1820s, haunts the house and is said to be permanently trapped inside the mirror. Evidence suggests that she is not the only one. Tourists who take their picture in front of the mirror often find strange anomalies in their photographs, creepy looking shadows, or an array of orbs. Some people even claim that they have seen fingerprints and silvery apparitions standing on the staircase reflected within the mirror's surface. Two rather compelling photos have come to light, one of what seems to be a little girl peeking, impossibly from behind a doll on the dresser, and another of a man wearing an old-fashioned cotton shirt, his face blurred but with a row of skeletal teeth. See them for yourself in the show notes. Today, the Myrtles Plantation is open to tours and also serves as a bed and breakfast. If you decide to visit, be sure to have your photograph taken in front of the mirror, but review it at your own risk. However, if Louisiana is too far away to visit, you can arrange to have an uncanny mirror mailed right to your very front door. How? eBay, of course. <laughs> In February 2013, 34-year-old painter Satires Haralambas and his 20-year-old flatmate Joseph Birch, an art and design student, placed an item for sale on eBay. This is Joseph's description from the original listing. For sale, large antique mirror, origins unknown, very possibly haunted. <laughs> This is a beautiful grand Victorian style mirror and has had pride of place in our North London studio apartment for several months now. However, I feel it's only fair that I tell anybody with an interest in buying it about the strange phenomena that has occurred since we acquired it. It is for this reason that we sadly feel unable to keep the mirror ourselves. The mirror was originally up in the hallway of the building we live in a house converted into ten different apartments of varying sizes, ours being flat number one. One afternoon, after the maintenance people had been doing work on the inside of the building, we returned from shopping to find it on the front lawn, among other rubbish. My flatmate asked the landlord if we could take it and put it up inside our own flat, as he had planned to throw it out entirely. We rested it on the wall above the radiator, where it has been ever since. Many times since putting up the mirror, both myself and my flatmate have woken in the early morning hours, screaming in pain. We both experienced what I can only describe as intense, sharp stabbing pains throughout our bodies. They would strike us both at the same time, then disappear as fast as they came. Our original suspicions was that somebody was performing some kind of voodoo or black magic on us. The mood in the flat turned sour, 
I felt constantly as if there was a sense of impending doom upon us, as if something awful was about to happen. Both of us began to feel zombie-like, as if drained of all our energy. Many times over the course of the next few months, we were unable to move out of bed, our bodies weak and tired, for no apparent reason. However, leaving the flat for any short amount of time would make us both feel instantly better. Upon returning to the flat, the zapping of energy feeling would strike again. One night, my flatmate became terribly ill. He could not stop shaking and complaining of feeling cold, despite the fact that his temperature was extremely high. Worried, I called an ambulance and we rushed him to the hospital. He was experiencing a tight cramping feeling in his leg that would leave him incapacitated, kneeled over on the floor, screaming in pain. Despite tests, the doctors found nothing to warrant such pain. With my flatmate working most days, I spent a lot of time here alone in the flat. I became paranoid and had the uneasy feeling that I was constantly being watched. My anxiety levels reached an all-time high, which led me to being prescribed antidepressants by my doctor for the first time in my life. While I had calmed down enough to be able to tolerate being alone in the flat, I couldn't help but notice strange things happening around me. I would put things down, and they would disappear. Things were constantly going missing. Keys, phones. Entering the bathroom one morning, after hearing a loud bang, I found objects strewn out across the floor and a tub of shaving cream, which had been on the other side of the room, head first in the toilet. Pictures have fallen from the walls. Many times while passing the mirror, I would see flickering shadows reflected in it. I would stand completely still and yet would continue to see them, quick glimpses of black darkness darting around in the space behind me. Last week, I woke up startled at 3.30 a.m. with a pain in my lower back and bottom that felt like I had been burned. I got up and looked in the bathroom mirror and found myself covered in deep red scratches going in all directions. I have short fingernails and after checking the bed found nothing sharp or no loose springs that could explain such a thing. You don't have to believe this, but everything I have said here is true. Truthfully, we both love the look of the mirror, but since we put it up in our flat, we have had nothing but bad luck, misery, financial problems, and illness. I have never been particularly superstitious, but just being around this mirror gives me the creeps and makes me feel sick to my stomach. Later, Sotiris reported that the phone, internet, hot water, and heat had all gone out, despite their equipment working fine. I don't think the mirror likes it since I painted it silver, he said. I took it to an antique dealer who said it was worth a hundred pounds, and that's the price we're asking for but we would ideally like it to go to someone who has experience with the paranormal and knows what they are letting themselves in for. The mirror went to the highest bidder at exactly 100 pounds. The two friends have disclosed that a feeling of lightness and hope has flooded into their apartment once more. There has been no word or update from the mirror's current owner. Obviously, cursed objects. <laughs> I find it completely unnerving how your life can be turned upside down by something as simple as bringing a mirror in from off the street. Who knew that being thrifty could really bite you in the metaphysical butt? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, scratch you down the physical back. It's like more in the middle. Oh, more in the middle. Oh, God! No, too much. Too much. <laughs> well, our next story comes to us from Charlie Baumhauser who related to Reddit in 2017. We used to live in a battered women's and children's shelter when I was young because my father was looking for us. Ugly divorce, Alabama gave him custody, mom took us to Washington State. One night, I looked in the mirror and I saw a kind-looking man, who I can only describe as a ghost, at the end of my bed. He was there all night, but gone when I woke up in the morning. He came back the next night, and the night after that, 
He was there every night for four months. We never talked. He never moved. Just stood guard. Then, one night, he woke me up from my sleep, and I'll never forget how surprised I was, because I'd never seen him move or talk. He said, He's coming. Get out now. I woke up my mom, and we packed up the car and went to a hotel that night. The next morning, we went back to find out someone had broken in and had gone room to room looking for someone. I never saw the man again after that. Wow. Yee. Isn't it interesting how he could see the reflection of the man in the mirror, but it sounds like he couldn't see him mm-hmm. actually standing beside his right. bed. And you have to wonder, who was he? Was it his grandfather? Yeah. Or someone in the family protecting them? Yeah. Heartwarming, but scary. Yes, exactly. Well, when we return, we'll explore the practice that has been destroying girls' sleepovers for years. (laughs) It involves a mirror. You know what we're talking Mm -hmm. about. And we'll hear another creepy mirror story, a live account told by someone who was actually there. You're listening to Odd Tonic. Don't cover our mirror just yet. We'll be back after a brief reflection. Thanks for joining us for a bit of Odd Tonic, dear guest. And don't worry about the spill. We think it gives the rug some character. (laughs) If Odd Tonic is something you look forward to every week, there are a few things you can do to support the show. Like tell a friend to listen to this little weird podcast. There's always room for one more in the parlor. If you haven't already... Hit the subscribe button so you never miss a show. And if you like what you hear, give us a review on iTunes. It'll really help us out. You can also pledge an amount on our Patreon and get some spooky rewards in the process at patreon.com slash odd tonic. Help us reach our goal to add video to some of the odd tonic experience. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, come join us on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook, all at Odd Tonic Society. Now, let's return for more stories of wraithful reflections. Welcome back. Are you feeling doubtful of these fantastic stories, dear guest? (laughs) We understand. You don't know the people involved, and it's hard to judge the validity. So, for our next true tale, we turn to our very own dear Jennifer. So... There was this bad mirror in the bathroom of the apartment I lived in in Evanston, Illinois. And what year? Um, 2002, 2003. Mm-hmm. And I noticed it right away. I mean, have you ever checked out your reflection and just felt like not only do you look worse than you normally do, but you question whether or not you always look that way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was the case all the time with this mirror in the mm-hmm. bathroom. And it wasn't from bad lighting or an unflattering warp in the mirror. It was it was just a bad mirror. Hmm. And guests would come over all the time. And after leaving the bathroom, they would remark on how they must need more sleep or they should really get on their diet or they were just feeling like they were getting old. Hmm. And I would tell them, don't believe it. Just ignore it. It's just a bad mirror. Interesting. I mean, I can only guess that someone who used to live there was overly critical of themselves every day, and maybe they left that energy behind in the mirror. Hmm. Of course, that isn't the only story I have from that apartment. The mirror was just one of them, and I don't miss it. Yeah, I don't blame you. (laughs) Interesting. I've never heard of that sort of phenomena before. It was more of like this feeling that just was in the back of your head. It wasn't anything about the reflection itself it, it was really strange and hard oh, to explain interesting so you didn't actually see yourself as looking different did, it was just but it really was reinforced by the thoughts you were having in your head at the same time it wasn't just like Ugh. it really was backed up by negative thoughts and negative emotions about it hmm. so i suppose this wasn't a mirror that you would want to play bloody mary in <laughs> no But I'm glad you asked that anyway, because we can't do an episode on mirrors and not mention Bloody Mary three times in a dark bathroom. (laughs) No. (laughs) Isn't it funny when boys have sleepovers, they spend the night watching movies and playing video games and girls just love to explore ways to conjure demons and ghosts? (laughs) You're absolutely right. In fact, I think we had mentioned that just recently on the the group, the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely true. (laughs) 
The- I love it. They're my people. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, the game of Bloody Mary is fairly simple and likely already known by most. So let's have it demonstrated in a true story from a 2007 blog by a writer that goes by Are You Bloody Mary? I was 10 years old, and my friend and I were having a sleepover. After gossiping about every boy in school, we got bored. And then I remembered Bloody Mary, and we both squealed, and I got the candles. Of course, the candles were actually fake. My parents wouldn't trust me with real fire in my room. Smart parents. (laughs) We went into the bathroom and switched on the candles. I decided to be the brave one, and I spun in circles a little more than three times. We both went to the mirror and I said, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. I couldn't focus. I was so dizzy. So I asked my friend if she saw anything. She said no. And then, in the reflection of the mirror, we both saw the window that faced the backyard. And there, staring at us from outside, was a girl with her hands plastered on the window. Her mouth was open like she was screaming. (laughs) We screamed and ran as fast as we could up the stairs to my parents' room, waking them up and quite frankly, ticking them off. (laughs) But we wanted my dad to go check it out. And when he went down there, there was no girl, no nothing. We didn't sleep a wink that night. And to be honest, I didn't sleep for a week after. I kept the curtains down and put earplugs in my ears. But that moment has stuck with me Forever. Hmm. I'll bet. (laughs) (laughs) But who is this gory gal behind the glass? Some who summon her see a girl, some see a woman, and sometimes she's very old. The identity of Bloody Mary has been much speculated. Some say it's Mary, Queen of England, who was feared throughout the land for her bloody persecution of Protestants. Perhaps it was Mary Worth, a woman tried during the Salem witch trials, but whose actual existence is dubious. Perhaps it is simply the manifestation of those involved. A Philip experiment for the tween age set. (laughs) However, Bloody Mary isn't the only way you can proactively scare the bejesus out of yourself. In 2013, a new mirror game took Reddit by storm, one called... The Three Kings. In this experiment, set up two mirrors that face each other with a chair placed in the middle. The chair is your throne, making you the king. The mirrors are your queen and your fool. At exactly 3.30 a.m., you are to sit in the chair with a candle lit in front of you, with a fan to your back. But whatever you do, never, ever look at the mirrors. Stare into the darkness above the candle. The game has begun. The purpose of this game is to transport your consciousness into another dimension. Having a person at the ready to help you out is mandatory. Here is a Three Kings experience as posted in 2013 by Reddit user Princess Oakenshield. Of course, being the 18-year-old sheltered girl that I am, I was nervous as heck no matter how skeptical I was. (laughs) I sat there, staring straight ahead, enjoying the breeze from the fan, when all of a sudden, it wasn't enjoyable anymore. It got slowly colder and colder. Out of the corner of my eyes, I thought I saw the right-hand mirror move but I resisted the overwhelming urge to look. Then the left one moved. After a quick nope, nope, nope moment, (laughs) I regained my composure. I was not going to let whatever these things were to get the best of me. I had a weird feeling I needed to be in control when I heard the first voice. It was no louder than a quiet whisper. A man's voice coming from my right. You aren't in control, darling. We are, he chuckled. I almost died right there. I was shaking. Then a woman's voice came from the other side. A bit too plump for her age, wouldn't you think? I hated that this whatever she was had the audacity to call me plump. 
I almost turned towards the mirror as I replied, but caught myself. Shut up. (laughs) It was honestly the only reply I could come up with. The words sounded muffled to me, even though I said them. The mirrors chuckled. It was maniacal and sent me straight from shivering to sweating. The candle was flickering in front of me. How long have I been down here? My thoughts were obviously heard and met with more laughter. Whispering came from everywhere. I felt like I was the fool set in front of a council with my fate in the hands of a king and queen present to my left and right. Looks like we have a full court tonight. The queen sounded pleased. I had an overwhelming feeling of being watched. The whispering got louder. Look at me. I have something I want to show you, said the king. It was startling to hear. For a brief moment, he sounded like someone I knew, someone I cared about. I didn't look. I stared forward. The whispering went silent. Listen, darling. You lack the face, the courage, and the power to rule, he added. We'll give you those and more. All you have to do is look. I was on the verge of tears. No one would love her anyway, the queen spat. Shut up, I whispered. It almost didn't sound like my voice. Your parents, friends, and even pets don't love you. All lies. Every last one. Every I love you. Every always. I was getting angry. I knew exactly what she was talking about. I wanted to get up and kick both mirrors and be done. I couldn't move. I felt like my head was spinning and my heart was being ripped out of my chest. The whispering was back. I felt like I had been down there listening to the whispering for hours. One last whisper reached my ears till I realized it was my phone ringing. I found myself in my basement, lights on, staring at the wall. I was covered in sweat, but unharmed. My friend Stephen closed his cell and rushed over to me, and I instantly began to sob. I am not usually a crybaby. He made me some coffee, and as I sat at the kitchen table, I described everything that had happened. I asked him how everything upstairs went, and he said, All was quiet, except my dog, Allie, was whimpering for the past half hour and just sat next to the door, leading downstairs. He said when he got to the basement... He heard giggling, but the second the door was opened, it stopped. He told me he was a little freaked out when he called my name, but didn't answer. And he kept asking me if I was okay, like he was hiding something. We cleaned up around 8 a.m. and went to breakfast. He had been unusually quiet the whole time. And finally, he turned to me and said it. I was really worried after I called your name and asked if you were all right. I did get an answer from a male voice that said, always. (laughs) (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) By the way, dear guest, um, don't try this. Uh, dear Jennifer and I have gone through a lot mm. of stories told by people who have done Three Kings, mm-hmm. and it is fairly terrifying. Mm-hmm. And many of them who tried it anyway um, really relied on their second person, to their pull second them out. person to pull them out of what seemed like a really weird trance. And and what's really interesting about this one is how personal. The stories can yes. get like you really need to be prepared to have all of your core just revealed and criticized. Right, right. <laughs> you go very, very deep inside your own consciousness, and as we know about consciousness, mm. anything goes. So <laughs> um, don't do it. But if you must, don't let our description be your mm. roadmap. Go to Reddit and look it up. That's as far as we're going to say. 
except don't try it. But if you do, tell us about it. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do it. (laughs) Don't do it. So here is another mirror game you shouldn't try (laughs) called Baby Blue. To play Baby Blue, you have to go into the bathroom on your own, turn off the lights, and lock the door. Always. When you stare into the mirror, hold out your arms as if you are cradling a baby. Rock your arms and chant, Baby Blue, Baby Blue, 13 times without making a mistake. If you do it right, your arms will start to grow heavier and heavier, and you will feel a scratching on your arms. Mm -hmm. Before it gets too heavy, you have to quickly take the invisible baby and flush it down the toilet (laughs) and run out of the bathroom. (laughs) If you don't do it fast enough, a hideous woman will appear in the mirror and scream, give me back my baby, loud enough to break the glass. And if you're still holding the baby, they say, she will kill you. (laughs) I love this one. This has just been the communal and conscious amalgamation of every girl's sleepover <laughs> everywhere. It's got the tongue twister. Mm-hmm. 13 times say a tongue twister. Mm-hmm. The, the baby. The baby. <laughs> the Hideous woman. The glass breaking <laughs> over the top. And the flushing of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it involves a toilet. Children have invented this one. <laughs> Well, funny enough, all these insanely scary conjurings are rooted in a much older, more benign Appalachian folk magic practice. The tradition instructs a woman on how to catch a glimpse of her love in the future. Mm. The routine is as follows. Eat an apple and comb your hair in front of the mirror at midnight on Halloween your future husband's image will appear over your left shoulder. However, if a skull materialized instead, it signified death before getting the chance to marry. (laughs) Another common belief is that if you hold a mirror over a well, a woman can see an impression of her future husband. Alternately, you can also place a mirror under your pillow to dream about your betrothed-to-be. Aww. Aww. That's so romantic. <laughs> Unless you see a floating skull of death. <laughs> right. uh, maybe Tinder needs that feature. Like, hottie, hottie, floating skull of death. Like, oh, stay away from crazy eyed Carl. Uh, you proved to me on so many levels why I'm lucky to have you. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I think we've successfully freaked (laughs) everyone out from ever, ever using a mirror again. What do you think? Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I think this has been a community service. Hmm. If any listeners out there suspect that their mirror is haunted, this is us saying, listen to your gut. Yes, that mofo got the (laughs) (laughs) whim-wham. And if you feel like you need to cleanse or even dispose of a suspect mirror, check the show notes for some resources. Yes. And if you have a strange mirror story, send it to the parlor Mm -hmm. at oddtonicsociety.com. We want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that this episode has also been an adequate PSA on the realities of doing late night mirror games. Mm -hmm. We are just starting to understand the dynamics of our consciousness, like I said. And people heed the Philip experiment. Episode number five. (laughs) Yes. You have the ability to manifest physical phenomenon around you. Yes. Unless you're prepared to handle it on every level, maybe stick to light as a feather, stiff as a board, girls. (laughs) 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 Or do each other's nails. Right. (laughs) And and then try scrying in them. Ooh. Just do your parents a favor and stop haunting their house. (laughs) Oh, well, my love... I think it's time to snuff out the candle on this edition of Odd Tonic. Mm. We hope you've enjoyed our shadowy stroll through superstition, scrying, and spirit conjuring. Mm. Remember to subscribe so you never miss a show. And leave us an iTunes review so we can spread debilitating mirror phobias far and (laughs) wide. We'll be back next week with more weird history, strange science, and paranormal perils. This is Dear Guest... Goodbye for now. 
But remember, if you are ever brushing your hair at midnight, waiting in the candlelight to catch a glimpse of your future betrothed, when from the reflected shadows come strange visages that you didn't quite expect, don't worry. It's just us. Good night.